My family calls me Mini Martha due to all of the gardening, cooking, and homesteading things I do and new things I'm always game to try. I've spent years learning and doing for fun what my pioneer ancestors did to survive. And now those skills could quickly become a necessity given the state of the world and I'm here to help you survive and thrive with confidence so that you don't have to worry about what the world's leaders are doing to mess it up. They're creating problems that you do not have to participate in if you can become secure, prepared, and more self-reliant. One of the first things you'll want to learn as a beginner homesteader, regardless of how much space you have, is to grow your own food. I want to show you my garden planning for this year with my goals of growing enough fresh food for the table, plus more for preserving to eat year round and to save seeds for the future as well. Decide what and how much to grow for a year's supply of food. I'm growing and preserving for two people in my small backyard in town. I created a spreadsheet for every type of plant that I'll be growing, how many plants I'll need per person, indicated where I'll be planting it after working out what can and cannot be grown together, the days to maturity, if and when it can be planted indoors and transplanted in the ground, or if and when it can be direct sown outdoors, which is all dependent on my zone's last and first frost dates each year. Next, I worked out on the overhead diagram of my lot where I plan to plant everything to make sure I had room for it all. I also consulted my planting diagrams from last year to make sure I was rotating crops to avoid having pests and diseases build up in the soil plus balance the soil health and nutrients. Ideally, you want to plant something in the space, same space only once every three to four years. Knowing what I wanted to plant and how much for a year's worth of food for two I needed, I inventoried my seeds and purchased what I needed. First, I searched locally, but a few seed types I had to order online. My garlic bulbs and asparagus plants were planted last fall. Some of my herbs and pots are perennials and are or are overwintered in my heated garage along with my pepper plants I dug up and potted to try to overwinter them to get a head start this year. In my four covered raised beds, I'll be planting my lettuces, umbellifers, brassicas, nightshades, and some of the legumes, and some alliums. My four beds make it easy to rotate crops and I'm purposely rotating the brassicas into last year's legume bed and the others are rotating as well. Some crops I'll be planting in spring, and then again in the fall when the hot weather is waning. I'd like to make a poly sheet cold frame structure to fit each bed someday that is convertible to a light row cover ready to use when needed to protect against frost and block insects. We'll see if I get that done this year. In between the fenced and covered raised bed area, I'll place my overwintered potted pepper plants. In the fall, the legumes will be chopped up and turned under in place and some areas will get a fall cover crop of mustard greens. My garden tower will be planted with some of the herbs, nasturtium, kale, Swiss chard, and Chinese cabbage. Over the tower, I'm adding a melon arch this year. The top can be covered to help reduce tower losses from the massive hailstorms that we get here. And climbing up the sides, I'll plant Hale's Best and Rockyford cantaloupe, honeydew melon, and sugar baby watermelon. Along the fence behind that, I'm planning on moving my asparagus and adding three more as a more permanent space that isn't in the raised beds. Climbing up my fence between the garden and the outdoor living space will be pickling and salad cucumbers. Along another 16 foot section of fence along my driveway on the other side, I'll plant English and snap peas and field peas for drying to use in soups. I'm going to put a Three Sisters planting area by my firewood pile, which is southern facing and protected from the prevailing winds. Mandan bride corn I'll be grinding for cornmeal, and the corn stalks will allow several types of pole beans for nitrogen fixing and to climb up and dry on the vine, with butternut, buttercup, and spaghetti squash shading the soil and preventing weed competition at the base. Next to the Three Sisters, I'll plant skyscraper sunflowers for the seeds, leaving some for the birds, and small sugar pumpkins for pies at their base that will hopefully climb up the stalks. Note that sunflowers need to be planted last out of everything in this area as they prevent other seeds, including weeds, from germinating. In addition to my existing raspberry patches and Nanking cherry bushes, in pots and mixed into my landscape I'll have herbs. Two things I'd like to plant but I'm going to pass on this year are fennel because it doesn't play nice with anyone else 
and potatoes I'm going to substitute with the rutabagas and turnips. Although I do have six felt potato bags that I may plant if I get to them, but last year's harvest wasn't great, so it's low on my priorities. I'm also passing on the planting of okra, kohlrabi, and eggplant, as I'm not crazy about any of those. The next step is to start seeds indoors at the appropriate times so that those can be started ahead of outdoor planting season and ready to be put in the ground when the time is right. Watch this video next to see all the seeds I'll be growing this year from my seed haul.